Hi there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto, and here we are in the rain in the port of Yokohama, taking a look at our Nissan Skyline, something that we haven't seen before, which is a non-turbo and automatic transmission version. Not only that, this one's got 261,311 kilometers, and this, surprisingly, is one of the better condition ones that I've seen. It's hard to believe that the mileage is that high, and it just goes to show that the mileage is just one aspect of what wears out of a vehicle. And so over time, time can damage the vehicle as well as use from the owner. And so uh, very satisfied with the condition of this one. It looks like it could be under 100,000 kilometers. So let's take a look. Pretty standard engine bay here. No signs of rust in it. The coolant looks good and the oil looks good. The timing belt was changed in 2008 at 189 200. There's a sticker right here for that. It's an RB20 engine, but with no turbocharger, it, I guess it would be more reliable than your standard RB20, which is generally not that bad of an engine anyway. So inline six cylinder with rear wheel drive, fairly light car. It would feel sporty, but not fast, I would think. Okay, so just gonna close the engine bay. Oh, might as well mention it's got Nismo strut tower bar on there. Otherwise, everything in here looks to be stock and uh, Pretty tidy, pretty clean. Okay, you're gonna lower the hood here. It's very windy today, and cold and windy and rainy, and so we're going to do the auction sheet inside the car on this one. So this is 1991 Skyline GTS V Selection. Now I tried to look up what a V Selection is and I, I couldn't find it. So if there's anyone uh, in the comments that knows what that is, please post that because I don't know. This is a great R because it's been in an accident, interior C and exterior B. I think interior should definitely be B here and exterior B is okay. It's just got really uh, uh, one dent that I could see clearly. It shows on here there's two uh, U2 dents on there plus various scratches. But on a car that's wet like this one is, it's a little bit difficult to see all of the damage. Okay, so original gray, 261, 311 kilometers on it. Electric folding door mirrors that actually do fold. And the report says interior dirty and scratched, seats wear, front cross member has been replaced and the core support has been replaced. And so those are the two, uh, the two members that the radiator sits on, the bottom one and the top one. Right front inner panel dented and headliner is dirty, steering wheel wear, wheels scratched, door mirrors scratched. Okay, so uh, it says W mark on the hood and on the roof. That means it's been repainted. There's been repaint on both sides. The repaint job looks to be in pretty good condition from what I can tell, but once again, once the, like if the car is wet, it can be really hard to tell. So let's go around the vehicle once here. And part of me, it is raining, and so we're bound to get a couple of drops of water on the lens here. So what surprised me is how nice and clean the body is. It certainly looks above average. It's nice to see when the car is wet, you can see all of the beating of the water. It means that the car has been uh, waxed, or in this case, glass coated, which is a resin or a, like a thin clear coat that they put on the car to protect it from, I guess, pollution, wear, scratches, whatnot. And it's got two stickers on the back window for having that done to it. So that's good to see. It's also nice to see the side skirts on this one have been changed over to, I guess you could call them aftermarket, but they are made by Nissan. So the Nismo version of the side skirts. And surprisingly, this is something I didn't know, but looks like the non-turbos get four bolt wheels on there and pretty standard brakes. Not like the upgraded brakes that the GTS-T gets, like that one over there. But that one's got aftermarket brakes and so I, I can't really show you what the difference looks like. I think that the, you know, the narrow body with a nice front bumper like this, uh, original fog lights, it's actually a really cool car. It is, you know, it's an, it's an automatic, it's a non-turbo, 
but it was bought for a really cheap price. And even if you were buying this one just for the chassis or the frame to put another engine in, that's a really good deal that we got on this. I'm not going to say exactly how much, and I don't encourage people to look for these kind of cars because it's so rare that an automatic non-turbo can make it this far in its life while still being here in Japan. Oh, let me show you the damages. Um, we got one dent here. Okay, back bumper has some corner cracking on the paint on both sides. A couple of scratches here or there, but nothing really that big. And I'll show you this side panel, which apparently has a U2 dent on the door. But if there is one, it's not easy to see. The doors are slightly sagging on both sides. So when you go to close them, they, they scuff the side skirt a little bit. Then you got a tiny bit of peeling here on the rear windshield. Interior is really nice. Door cards are in good shape. On the driver's side, there's a little bit of peeling of that uh, inset liner there. The dashboard has very, very tiny bubbling. So the R32 is always bubbling in this area here and up there. And up there is bubbling a little bit. Let me just zoom in. You can see there, but it's, uh, it's very, very insignificant compared to the average one. Just gonna stick this auction sheet in here. Go over to the other side. So the seats and the interior are the same as what you would get in the GTST. So they are a sportier seat than your Camry or Corolla would have. You got a looks like a cigarette burn in the driver's side. Nope, not cigarette burn. That's just water. And those seats don't look like they've gone almost 300,000 clicks. So very good. Steering wheel. Sorry, it's so windy and my my wetsuit is really hard to move in. When it's this windy, it's pushing my suit everywhere. So floor mat looks good. Gauge panel looks good. It's very clean inside here. I don't think that the AC works, but with being as cold as it is right now and as windy as it is, my hands feel like ice and they're all wet. Uh, and so I can't really feel the AC even if there was AC working. Uh, aftermarket stereo on there, all these buttons and functions seem to work good. Power steering, power windows, that's good. The brakes feel fine. The shifting, this is kind of funny because I've never actually seen this before. Uh, the shifter, automatic, um, of course, because all the ones that we buy are manuals because, you know, the Skylines are a sports car. And so the shifting was good. It's got the uh, power and the hold, which are switches that you don't regularly get. And down here is where you've got your uh, selector for your gears. So most of them will have it like here or here somewhere. This one's got it as a separate display here where you would normally have the clock. And so those would be custom pieces for the automatic only versions. Back seats are possibly never sat in before. They look to be in fantastic condition. Okay. And so there you have it. Automatic transmission, non-turbo version of the Skyline. Probably the first one, well it is the first one on our channel. Probably the first one that uh, the subscribers have ever seen. So kind of an interesting one there. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. Have a nice day.